it's showtime. Good morning. Up, uh, morning, YouTube. That was loud. Jeez. Starting the day off terrible. How you doing, monkey? Doing. I got a head cold. <laughs> yeah. Look, doop. Got them barnyard animals going. More gas. More uh, rich. River rat. Can do. JP. And Terry Curry. Good morning. Nothing new, man. Nothing new. Nothing new. Or Dan. There we go. Got that up. All right. We're ready. Start chatting. Why can't I see chat? I usually see chat. I don't know. It's your phone. Oh, it's one of them you got to. Never mind. I'm not on my laptop. <laughs> I, I don't know how you guys do it on a phone, man. I barely see the picture, let alone chat. Be on and off with the glasses all day. Easter. I think we'll just do regular ducks today. Regular duck? Just regular ducks. Hey, I you get to go back out. to work tomorrow. Yeah. I just figured out how to modify StreamYard. That's cool. What do you mean modify? I can move the in the solo layout. Yeah. I can move well, like you and me. I can make um. them smaller, bigger, and move them around on the screen wherever I want and save it. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Yeah, it, you uh, click edit layout down in the lower right. Yeah, I made two. Uh, I'm not very good. At it. Yeah. Oh, he's awake. Drive by. So I like pull a do. Like see what everybody's saying. My value really? off. <laughs> so you got an appointment yeah. coming up, huh? Yeah, twelve thirty. I'll be a couple minutes, so I got a designer shirt for a guy. Yeah. Oh. Uh -huh. I think I, I want one. to design a shirt too, but I, got I, got one. One. I already got your shirt figured out. Yeah. 
big red button. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I stole I stole a, a video clip from somebody. Uh oh. Yeah, so I put it on YouTube so I could download it and convert it on my end. Uh huh. I accidentally left it public. So I'm getting more comments and crap about that damn thing than anything else I do. No copyright? I don't think so. <laughs> I didn't got dinged yet, so. Monkey, did Grandma Kelly get a hold of you? Nope, I have not heard from Grandma Kelly. <clears throat> Keep checking my email. Nothing from Grandma Kelly. I want me she a got fine herself bag a new over. place. Huh? She got herself a new place. Who did? Oh yeah, Grandma Kelly. Yeah. Yeah. She uh MJ was gonna be the farthest traveler at a Freedom Fest, and then uh Grandma Kelly stepped in. I found out. I typed it in on maps, and she got yep. she got another four hundred miles on MJ or three hundred miles or something. Uh, one hundred fifty, maybe one hundred fifty. Yeah, I think. I knew. I knew she was farther. Won me a fine bag over on Charlie and Rob's a couple weeks ago. This is going on the Freedom Fest table. Oh, nice. Because I'm not a metal detectorist. <laughs> or an MJ. Changing a headlight. Them are easy. Morning, MJ. I'm going to get some those LED ones from my little G. The white one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm trying to think. There's something, something different with them. Because we did that to a car, and we ended up having to put the old bulbs back in. You got to do something to make them brighter. Because under the standard, it's dimmer than usual. I want the regular headlight with, with the LED outline. Oh, the halo? Yeah. Like the Hellcats? Yeah. <laughs> Are you going to get the red? Uh, the, that one I'll probably do black. Or not black, blue. What color is your Jeep? White. Yeah, I look cool. I don't want to do anything to the new one. Until it's old. Uh, not the pasture one in this car. Uh, I think you can go, if you turn the steering wheel all the way to the right, you can take the three seven millimeter screws out of the fender well and peel it back enough. You can reach your hand up in there and, but you got to go through the fender well, if I'm not mistaken. On the driver's side. Passenger side. It? Passenger side, you just reach down there and get it. The Toyota? Uh, the Fusion or oh. yeah, Ford Fusion. You don't have to take all the screws out and you don't have to remove the entire fender well. Just get the ones right there by where the light bulb is going to be, and you can peel it back just a little bit to get your arm up in there. But actually, my tiny hand fits. Now, that part helps. <laughs> yeah, when I got that problem, I yell out in the shop, it was like, 
little dude in Bay Five <laughs> over here. <laughs> I need some. I need some small hands and arms. Yeah, sometimes. Here comes the sun. Here comes the sun. It's going to be a good thing. Sister in law called me this morning. The dad is up. It's a good deal. That's good news. Mom's out. Yeah, mom's out. She's home. My little brother's talking with other doctors on his surgery. Morning, heavy. I've been to a circus with a live elephant, but not a barnyard. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was drunk when I said that. Uh, I don't know what I was thinking. You got to do the same thing with the Chevrolet Malibus, Dan. You got to take the whole front fascia off. And when you do, when you're doing that. You got to do something like that. You might as well change every single light bulb on the front of that car. You got to take that front fascia off, that whole bumper. Might as well change them all, because everybody knows light bulbs are like washer and dryers. When the washer takes a crap, crap, the dryer is right behind it. So save yourself the hassle of having to take that bumper off again in two weeks. Change them all. Hi, Mama, Morning, Taz. Mama Taz. I am 2,000 hours away from uh, monetization. Oh, there you go. On the 500 level? Yeah. And that's just where you can have uh, membership or something? Yeah. I'll bring it 700 now. So, so we're going to call it Big Red Button Club? Yep. There you go. <laughs> we have a green button, a yellow button, and a red button. <laughs> and just to say, screw you, YouTube, it's only going to be a 25 cent membership. <laughs> so you can join Guido for a cup of coffee. <laughs> there you go. Bad cup of coffee from the hospital. <laughs> yeah. Don't tell me about that bad coffee from the hospital. Uh, I was so happy to get home last night and make a real cup. I still got to figure out how to do that cowboy coffee. I think that would work better at the campground. Just a 12-cup coffee pot with a percolator inside. Chucked the percolator part. Yeah. And just fill up your water up to the bottom of the spout. Put it on the fire. Get it lukewarm. Mm -hmm. If it's a 12 cup pot, it's a half cup of coffee grounds. And then boil it. And then boil it. As soon as it comes to a rolling boil, let it rolling boil for four minutes. Okay. Take it off the fire and let it sit off to the side for a minute. And then pour a cup of cold water right in the middle of it. All them grounds will go right to the bottom. Let it sit for another minute after you pour the water on it, and then pour your cups. Slow, obviously, but pour your cups. Get down and close to the bottom. Might want to get, get ready to chuck it, because then you're going to start getting grounds. But <clears throat> or start another pot. <laughs> we want grounds in their coffee. Yeah, I like chewing my coffee too every now and then. Yeah. <laughs>
think Jeff's got a 36 cup or 48 cup that he's taking to Freedom Fest. That's going to be awesome. Now, do you leave the lid on it? Uh, I leave the lid open while it's boiling so I don't, so I can watch it boil. You know, if it starts boiling over, you can move it off the heat. Because I, I got one of those big ones outside. Yeah. I don't have a yeah, lid. You, yeah, leave, leave the lid off while it, it's going through the cooking process. 12 cup coffee pot the other day, so we'll have an extra. Oh, awesome. I got one here. I'm taking it. My dad confiscated the big one I had out at the farm. He uses it daily, so I can't use I can't take it. Sweet. Didn't even have to change the bulb, just needed a wiggle. <laughs> probably got bad plug, MJ. You had to, if you had to wiggle it to make it come on, probably got bad plug. You unplug it and look at it, it'll be burnt looking. Found you pretty well easy to fix that with the uh, dielectric grease. Yeah, you can smash some dielectric grease in there if it if it is burnt. Make make sure the pins were right bent in more. But I've taken the prongs on the bulb and just tweak them just a little bit. Mm -hmm. So when you plug it in, it grips harder. What's up, Kenneth? Hundred cups. Hundred cup coffee maker. What? Need to send me the link for that thing, Mama Taz. <laughs> I've been making that thing and just still. All right. <laughs> it looked fine. Okay. Huh? Everybody, everybody gets lucky every now and then. That bitch was heavy. Don't fix it if it ain't broke. That's right, MJ. <laughs> I would have already bought it. Put them all back in. And then figure out the wire is all messed up. Yeah. <clears throat> Drive down the road, hit a bump, your headlights fucking go off and on. <laughs> Tell you one thing that's been driving me nuts on the the new Jeep. You put the headlights to auto. Uh huh. In the daytime, you turn the blinker on, the headlight goes out. Yeah, it's supposed to. Yeah, it. I don't like it. Oh, what? How do you even? Be my left cop and pull up and say, "Hey, your headlights out." How do you even know it goes out if you're in the Jeep? I'm, if I'm behind somebody, the headlight points at their tailgate. Oh, I got you. <laughs> it's like, do you run out and look, see if your headlight goes out when you turn your turn signal on? I almost did. <laughs> no, all the newer all the newer vehicles are doing that now. It's like, man, I hope it doesn't do that at night. Can't see as it there, is. Can do? Got water in your assembly? Look, it's my brother from another mother. Brother from another mother. Hi. What's up, Carson? I give you some Good West morning. Coast love, Guido. Yeah. What's happening, Terry? What's up, bro? Mr. Monkey. Yeah, yeah. Got me a head cold, so no hospital trips today. What'd you say? I got a head cold. Oh. And they won't let me in the hospital. Well, you got it in the hospital, I bet you that. Oh, I'm sure I probably did. Yeah, you don't go to a <laughs> hospital not sick and think you're coming out right. scot-free, bro. 
Yeah. Oh, they, won't, they won't let me in to see my dad. That sucks. So my sister-in-law has been keeping me informed. She's a nurse. Nice. So is this the hangover show or the not hangover show? Uh, we're still in not hangover stage. Status? Even Until next some week? Of us, some of us are hungover, but it's not a hungover. <laughs> well, I'm hungover, all right, but you know. <laughs> no, I don't know, Guido. No, no I'll try to figure that out, Guido. <laughs> Here I am yeah. talking to the two non-drinkers in our little family. Yeah. Cheers. <laughs> yeah, Here's to that, brother. Yep. <laughs> I, no, I don't know already. what you're talking about. What's up? Good morning, goats. Good morning, goats. Headlights are flip. Oh, yeah. Although the t shirt is going to be a hangover Sunday t shirt. Yeah. Did Apparently, you with out? a big red button. Big red button. And then we're putting Guido on the back. Are you talking about put, hitting the big red button already? Oh, yeah. <laughs> put Guido's hangover Sunday. Or Guido's not hangover Sunday. Yeah. Big <laughs> red button on the front. Huge one. Thinking about. We'll put the knot in red. Midday. <laughs> I think I'm going to go try to hunt some specimens midday today. Why not? Why not? Why not? I can't sit around all day, dude. What are you doing now? Uh, cleaning Labradorite. Oh, okay. Cleaning all the crap off of it so that I can put it back in a bag and look at it. That's weird, Miss Candu. That's something I've never heard of. No water in the headlight assembly, but they go out when it turns cold. Hmm. It goes out. Yeah, well, it goes out when it turns cold because the well, what kind of headlight is it? They blow. Of? They blow when it turns cold. Oh, they actually blow out. Yeah, they don't just go out. They blow, and she's got to change them. The only circumstance I can think of when they're blowing would be if there's moisture inside the assembly. There's got to be some moisture. There's got to be. And or if it's not in the assembly, it could be getting into the... the uh, Around the, the gasket? The wiring uh, or the uh, wiring connection. Oh, in the plug? Getting into the connector? Dielectric grease. Yeah. Yeah, try dielectric grease. You gotta keep it from shortening. Right. Guido, is the sun shining on the west side? <laughs> uh, till about two o'clock. <laughs> the sun shines until about two o'clock? Yeah, then it's gonna rain. Oh, okay. Which means I will not get out and fly today. Get that garden going. Dude, I need to get a garden going. Going to, but not here. I need to get it going, too, because half the room that's underneath my legs here that's taken up is full of gardening stuff, and I got to get it out of here. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. Would be a good day to go fishing. This is a tedious business right here. Yeah, Terry dude. Curry. Terry Curry's not blue, Guido. Not mm -hmm. YouTube did it to him. That's just not right. <clears throat> I 
Sorry, Terry. Now you are. Terry, he ain't sorry. Don't listen to him. Let's play with people's emotions. Way in Canada. <laughs> I told you I was playing with people's emotions. <laughs> oh, blood. <it. laughs> What's up, Thomas? Good morning, brother. Good morning, Thomas. Mushrooms are popping. Wait a minute. Isn't goats in Ohio? Uh, I thought somewhere goats up there. Up. I thought goats is up by Ed Marvin. And there's morels up that north already, and it's cool. Hey, wait, wait. Didn't you guys say there's going to be possible morels out in Indiana? That's what we was hoping. But it was going to be an early year, but it got cold. So I don't know if that's going to pause the mycelium. But according to goats, they're popping in Ohio. So, Well, if there's morels hunting, hunting going on out there, I'm going to be hunting them. Right. We might be, never, we might be too late. We might be too late in May. Never hunted a morel, never eaten a morel, and, and right. I need all the above. That'd be rad if it was the case. Mushrooms are in Indiana right now, so we're going to miss it, dude. Oh, man. Pick yeah. them in Missouri. I don't here. have any males in uh, Northern California. Who? They probably do, but that's Northern California is Northern California. It's not, it's not a hop, skip, and a jump for me, you know? What, six hours? Well, I'm, I'm probably going to be in that general direction, actually, on 420, so... Hasn't been 100% confirmed, but I think I'm going up. It does look bad. Yeah, they are. Some of the best mushrooms you can eat. Well, I've never had one. They're there. <laughs> Terry I, never, I never say good morning to Terry Curry. It's always evening. <laughs> black all the black morels so the yellows ain't up yet he's far east coast man what's up full half That would be a better way to do this. Ultrasonic cleaner. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that ought to work. I'll give you all that hard on YouTube. I wasn't Something. looking for any common sense, okay? Putting all their <laughs> uh, rock tumbler crap in the ultrasonic cleaner. <laughs> All this common sense business. Yeah, that's what I, that's the way I'm figuring it go, goat. I know when it turns 70 here early in March, I was like, man, morales are gonna be early this year, and then it tanked. My asparagus popped up and froze. I got hay bales on them right now, trying to save them. How many chickens you got still? Uh, 14 chickens and 32 quail. <clears throat> Getting you got to keep those quail in, in cages the whole time, right? Yeah, they're separate from the chickens. Right, but you got to keep, like, you can't let them just oh. them out. Oh, my dad's got that figured out, dude. He's got a two cage. It's a two walled cage. So there's an inner cage, and then there's an the outer cage with chicken wire. Mm -hmm. And he's got a worm shocker hooked up to it. Oh yeah. So anything that gets close to that cage, sorry. 
Strong. We so, getting uh, we're getting eighteen sorry, eggs and we're getting eighteen eggs a day. From the chicken or the quail? From the chickens, probably twelve eggs a day from the quail. But it takes a lot of quail eggs to have breakfast. Uh oh, girl. Uh oh, yeah. Amber alert. Amber alert. <laughs> And those things used to really tick me off. I'd be in the van driving, and that work phone and my phone, they'd both be going off at the same time. And yeah. Interrupting my uh, audio book. That's not acceptable. No, it's just not cool at all. I said, I don't know how many I gave can do, but for deer camp. No, it was, it was before deer camp. I think I gave him to him at the last Freedom Fest. And he tickled them. Mm. They turned out pretty well. I couldn't imagine hard boiling them things and peeling them. That's, that had to be a yutch. <laughs> I mean, pickled eggs are uh, whatever. I might not be talking to the right group here, but... <laughs> <laughs> pickled eggs are they're, they're like i've eaten them and i'm like yeah i mean it's good or whatever but i just rather eat it hard boiled and you can keep the pickling out of it don't shoot me can do don't shoot just saying oh he's uh out in the woods you're saying okay well he's gonna come back and watch the show and then oh boy yeah Pickled eggs need to be served with beets? Nah. Me neither, if, MJ. If you eat a pickled egg. <laughs> I'm not into pickled eggs like either. It sounds like, I'm, I'm telling you. Pickle juice and hard boiled egg. Hmm. Nah. But it leaves that really hard, like, outer edge. Like it hardens the outer part of the protein. Or you're like, nah, I don't know what that that's all about. <laughs> no. I don't know what that's all about. <laughs> you just did something to that egg that I don't know if I want to try. <laughs> Look. Yeah. <laughs> kind of like balut, you know, you're like partially. <laughs> Grown baby duck. No. <laughs> oh, Thomas so got sunshine today. Hell yeah. <sighs> no. No. You can keep it. Yeah. No. Yeah, I'm the same way. Traditional eggs, hard boiled, no soaked. See, I eat a lot of hard boiled eggs. Oh too. yeah. I eat a lot. Yeah, it's my preferred breakfast is mac like five or six hard boiled eggs and oh yeah, love hard boiled eggs. Yeah, my work day because you don't got time to be doing all this crap, so I just keep a ton of hard boiled eggs around. You tried the tappity tap tap and gotten successful with it with nope. uh, hard boiling your eggs. So Every single one of them I do the Carson method, it blows freaking eggs out all in Bro, the water. You need to stop Armstrong in those things when you tap. Them. <laughs> <laughs> You're going way too oh, you hard. You can't slam them down on the ground. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly right. They're almost like they fried, looking like they're or boil like they're. They look like they're fried. You know? Yeah. No. Now you can say Come those. T-Rep. T-Rep. What's happening, bro? Brad Hayden. T rep your surprise, surprise prizes. All right. It's in the mail, man. In the mail. I don't know what the hell it is, but it's gonna be a surprise. Surprise. Just like the loot.
What are we down to, Miss Candu? 40 days? 40 days too many. Well, it's more like 35 for me. Should be 41 because last week it was 47. How many days till May 17th? I'm going to tell my boss that. I'm going to be like, you know what, dude? 40 days, she says. My buddy Grease is stuck in Indiana all by himself, and he needs Right. I need a prospecting buddy. Yeah. <laughs> He's an old-timer, just like you. He needs help. He needs help. Oh, now I'm in. Give me some gotta, of that sour We got to hone in on that gold for the group. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We got to find out where to tell the group not to go pick so we can pick. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to try one of these tomahawks where everybody else does make sure they're all right yeah yeah <laughs> an old taste test make sure none of them are going to get sick right yeah you see this spot right here don't dig here yeah do not <laughs> here horrible we'll have a little stick sticking up out of the water <laughs> we'll take one for the team and we'll dig here but you guys go over there yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's always rigged, Thomas. It's always rigged, bro. Hey, that's supposed to be a blocked word. <laughs> blocked. Yeah. Dude, there's a lot of words that should be blocked, but I put it in my block list yesterday. Well, it must be rigged that it didn't work out, huh? I guess. <laughs> Can't triple stamp a double stamp. Well, at least you didn't say hard boiled eggs, MJ. <laughs> <laughs> Fifteen entries for that custom T-shirt. Fifteen. That's easy pickings. Mm -hmm. What color are we gonna make it? Whatever color you want. <laughs> Remember, it's gonna have a red button on it, so you don't want a red shirt. Don't want red. Might look good on black or gray. Do they have an OD green? Yeah. Oh, this is tedious. Oh, Guido. I'm going to have to do the bounce thing. Fine. I got this guy's going to show up at 1230. So I got to get string yard already. I'll be back as soon as I'm done. All right. Sounds good. We'll see you a bit. Ooh. Take her in, brother. Fun. You ever sit down to do something and you think it's going to take you like 15, 20 minutes? Once yeah. you're part of the way into it, you're like, this is going to take me hours. Told you, ultrasonic cleaner. I don't know if it would help me, honestly. I mean, it might. We use cleaning out the cracks. It's all raw labradorite and it's got just a ton of caked in like mud all around it. And uh, well, it's hard to pause it. So it's not like you can just put it in the water and give it a shake. It's kind of like it's crushed to it and I I try to put it in water and let it soak and 
pulled it out and looked at it. It was the same. But then I took a brush to it, to clean, to dried it off, and it rectified the problem. So I am brushing all of this stuff. A Dremel tool? A Dremel? Yeah. No, I think that would actually be harder. Because you still got to get all the, all the sides of it. But now you're just working with the power tool versus just this little brush. I can pretty much doesn't take that much. It just needs bristles to hit it. So power tools overkill, in other words. I'm just lazy, so <laughs> don't get lazy now. Moose. You can be lazy when you're dead, bro. All right, Thomas. Got things to do. Come on, Guido. Going oh, on, cars. Charity brother coming in out of left field. Yeah, you guys look lonely up here. I figured I'd call in. Stop doing Bro, it. you got the sun shining out there, don't you? Yeah. Get after it. It's still warming up outside, man. It's 38 degrees outside right now. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. It frosted last night. Everything froze. Define, define warming up up there, Thomas. Uh, mornings are 45 degrees, not 38, and the daytime it's 60. <laughs> That's that sounds like my way. Yeah, I'm starting to feel a little better, Brad. Even though everything still tastes like cardboard. That's not blue either. What the hell? I'm slacking. Yeah, right now, goats, It's uh, we hit about, I don't know, it gets freezing at night, but daytime, we're getting up to maybe 45, 40s. Where are you at, goats, again? Ohio. Ohio or Michigan or something like that. Ohio. Ohio? No, just uh, sinus cold goats. I know if you live right there on the damn lake, man, it can be real cold. That wind chill off of the lake. Oof. Oof. Oh, yeah. Almost to Fort Wayne, Indiana. <clears throat> you know. I lived in uh, Waukesha, Wisconsin, right there off of the lake. It was cold. You guys should be on your uh, spring salmon run, shouldn't you? Me? Yeah. No, another month. Is it? Yeah. Kings will start running in about a month, month and a half. What's the rules on spearing those things? With like <laughs> dive, like if you went diving, is you spear fish them? Oh, yeah, people spear fish. It's badass. Yeah, that's the one I was thinking is cohos. Cohos or silvers. They're actually the last one of the last fish to run. Oh. They, they run in um, August all the way to October. Kings come in first. You got your kings, and then your pinks and chums, then your sockeyes, and then your cohos. That's the order they run in. Has nothing to do with farm animals, does it? Well, they farm. Change in the name. No more barn barnyard. <laughs> yeah, cohos are the last ones to run up here, goats. I like, which doesn't bother me because I get to go fishing for them while I'm out hunting moose. Are cohos the 
Coho's are the best tasting ones. Am I right on that? Coho and yeah, suck. No, chum sucks. No, sock eyes. Not chum. Sock eyes, red salmon, which is what mostly you always see in your stores, canned. Most of your canned salmon is pinks, which is a really oily, fishy fish, but it's really oily, so it cans real good and preserves for a long time. Well, you pull a silver, you pull a coho and a sockeye out of the river at the same time when they're both fresh. It's really hard to tell them apart unless you know the certain ways to identify them. They almost look identical until up close. All I know is there's none in my freezer. Yeah, chum smoke, okay. Yeah, we call them dog. Right. Yeah, Up here, a lot of the natives catch the chums, the dogfish. That's what they use to feed their dogs during the winter. And... Now, can you catch char where you're at? No, I got to go. In the, or Arctic char, yeah. There's a big one lake by me that has a big lake that you can catch them red Arctic char. I want, I want to try char. I've heard that it's like fantastic. Oh, it's some good eating. Yeah. I never even heard of it. What is it? It's landlocked like cross between a freaking salmon and a trout. Yeah, Char. it's a landlocked salmon. Basically, they don't spawn out to the ocean. They just live in the waters, the lakes. Okay, we've got something like that. Well, aren't there char? Aren't there char that that are um, brackish and and go in between the two? No, oh, yeah, they'll go into creeks and rivers and all that, but they mainly in the winter times they spawn in lakes and everything. They actually get a really bright red, and they get a really really cool looking red with black dots. And... I've seen pictures of them where they look like a damn peacock, dude. They just got so much color in them, and yep. That's why I was telling you that I have a new bucket list to do the um, to do a camping trip up in the Arctic in the in the warm season. I was watching some people do that, and they're eating char and hunting ptarmigan and picking berries and making food out of the three. I was like, dude, that looks yeah, you like get your Arctic, up there. You get your Arctic char and your grayling. Grayling's are another really good eating fish. They're the ones with the big fin on the back that stands up like really tall. I've seen those. Yeah, they're about the size of a trout, just with a big yep. old fin across their whole back. Yep, that's another really good eating fish. Yeah, I think we call them kokanee down here. Chinook is king salmon. Yep. Yeah, I got to get my kids out and do some more fishing besides just for salmon. Teach them the ropes before they get out of the house. Halibut, baby. Halibut. So I'm oh, up a different boat this year so I can go out. I don't got to fix it. I just don't in the freaking one while well, it's going. One thing I miss eating is halibut all the time. Uh, a little bit milder than cod. Yeah, it's a white flaky fish. It's like cod, but a little bit milder taste. Halibut's bomb. Smokes good. Smoked fish is good, but fish, like a white meat fish, you want to eat it right, you got to cook it over mesquite. Grill it on mesquite. And it's oh, yeah. just, we also got the Dolly Vardens up here, too, which look almost identical little, to an Arctic. A little uh, white meat fish is intended for mild seasoning and Primarily seasoned by the wood that you cook it over, and it should be mesquite. 
period. I'll take that to the bank. Completely nails it. No, I don't think it tastes anything like a goat. I can't say that's the same for th stuff like salmon and trout. That That's different. But white meat fish, mesquite. Yep. I don't even really like salmon, uh, good alder, cedar. I would imagine, yeah, cedar, cedar plank. Yeah. Stuff like that. Me no pro salmon cooker. I just pan, I just skillet salmon. I don't know how to grill salmon. It's not my thing. <laughs> what are you laughing at, sucker? What goat what said? What do you say? I don't taste. Are you? You see right there? <laughs> and fried trout. That's the only way I can eat it. Pan fried trout is the best. It's re it yep. really is. Oh my gosh. So good. I'll tell you, it does not taste good cooked over pine if you try to grill no, it. No, nothing's pine. good over oh, pine. Gosh. Me and my buddies did that, and we we're all like, yeah, no. First and last time we did that. <laughs> Way too much pitch in that pine. Oh my gosh, it was so bad. I think my favorite though is salmon. Just anything but Atlantic or farm raised. More David. Hey David. I'm going to the Eastern Sierras backpacking and uh catch not the all the all there is to catch is trout but it's uh so good on a pan they come when come in with their built-in timers when you pan fry them when their eyeball pops out it's done i pull the meat off the rib kind of thing so you keep yeah. the head on and, and you may think i'm joking about that but it's the truth you keep the head on fry it when the eyeball pops out it is literally done when on both like when it, one side pops out flip it other side pops out you're done and and the meat is just grab it from the back and it just pulls pulls right off of the ribs and that is correct it is money that's that is one of my favorite fish to eat period all time but it's got to be like you know it's got to be those kind of conditions it's got to be a um, a red meat trap because if you're in the eastern Sierras and you're in a place where you're catching white meat trout, that's that's out of a hatchery. You catch the red meat trout, it's it's born and raised up there, and uh, and there's a huge difference in the way that they taste. Hatchery versus wild, major difference. Major difference. Major difference. I'll eat them both. I mean, if I kill them, I grill them, but. Praying that yeah, we're, we're getting a lot of hatchery fish up here now. More and more every year. Well, the idea is, is to get into some of them deep spots that are a little harder to get. You get the solitude, but you also get uh, 90 plus percent of your fish are going to be wild, raised up there, bred up there, born up there, the whole thing. Um, and they don't have to stock them that much because... There's not as much traffic just due to the nature of the location. So you'll catch red meat nonstop. Mostly brooks. But they they got other other trout they release in there too. No. Oh no, no way. way. Atlantic salmon over Pacific. No, you're what? crazy. Who says this? 
That's stinking Canadian. Jerry Curry said, once you eat Atlantic salmon, you'll give up that Pacific fish. No. Terry Curry. Come, come now. I, I, I'm sensing a smidge of biasness coming out of that statement. Yeah. Well, maybe maybe Canada's got better Atlantic salmon. Now, now it might just be it. my bias, but I'll say the same thing for <laughs> spiny tail lobster out here. I'll take a spiny tail lobster on the West Coast before I ate a wet or East Coast Maine all day, every day. I'll take them both. I'll take them both. That's a true statement right there. Yeah, I'll take them both. I used I to have a slipper lo lobster in Okinawa. Slipper Man, lobster. those were good. That's similar to the spiny tail. They're not quite yeah. the same. They're flatter. They're like a flatter tail. But they're good. Lobster season's over here. It's a heartbreaker. I've still never eaten lobster in my life. Oh, dude. That's kind of like Jeff, bro. He can't, he can't eat it. It's funny, man. You can buy, you know, Maine lobster here for cheaper than you can buy the spiny tail lobster here, even when the spiny tails are in season. And the spiny tails, we get them here year round because. Uh, they'll import them from Thailand and uh, Brazil and Mexico. And I don't know what their rules are, but apparently they hunt them year round down there. Now, when you go, do you do it by hand or are you using this? If you go diving, you have to catch them by hand. You yeah. dive for them. And yes, I'll do that. I haven't done that in a while, but yes. Um, but then outside of that, I use hoop net go on a boat, bring like three or four traps and set like just small little line, let them soak for 15 minutes, turn around, pick them up, depending on if there's lobster there, reset or move them down, move them on down and just keep doing that. What about octopus? Huh? What about octopus? We catch them all the time. I don't keep, I don't keep them. I'm not going to, like I like octopus when people serve it. I think mm -hmm. it's good. I just haven't taken the time to really learn like the prep and I don't eat enough of it to deem it worthy for me to kill them. So I just toss them back. It's too cool of an animal. I'll eat it if someone's already got it dead, but I'm not in the business of catching and killing them. Yeah. This is okay. Yeah. I don't. It's go good, man. I like it fresh. Yeah, it's good. Octopus is good eating. There's no doubt about that. Curry, Curry, there he goes. Yeah. Nova Scotia lobster is deemed to be the world's best. <laughs> <laughs> deemed by who, Terry? You? Nova Scotia. By Nova Scotians. The new Scots? The new Scots like it? <laughs> well, if Alaska had lobster, I'd say it'd be the best in the world, so. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> Only lobsters that feed off the remnants of the salmon. Well, there'd be lots of salmon in the fall for them to eat on up here. Hey, you know what? One of the best lobster baits that we can get out here is, is the salmon heads. Yeah. So we yeah. use salmon heads for halibut. Yeah. Dude, you take those salmon heads, uh, tuna head and salmon head. It just is what it is. Best best lobster uh, bait. Tell me what, Envy. Benzo's Cooks got it, it up, nailed. I'll try it. Benzo's got it nailed. Whatever lobster's free is the best. Yeah. Somebody come by my yard and dropped off three freaking shrimp pots. Nothing wrong with them. His dad used to fish. He didn't fish. So he dropped off his shrimp pots at my yard. I'm going to go out and put some shrimp pots up this year, I think. Yeah. Get some of them big jumbo shrimp. I know what I'm buying at the store tonight. Yeah, about the only thing I saw, I went spear fishing yesterday. I went spear fish attempting yesterday. I got freaking here I go. horribly skunked. 
but the only thing I was able to really see was a couple of smash lobster pots. Yeah, I'll tell you what. You can take an oyster and put it on the on the charcoal. It's best. They're good cooked too, uh, but I, I prefer oysters on a half shell. Just raw, Can't do raw, it. raw. Mm, barbecue oysters. <laughs> I love raw oyster too, though, man. There's something special about them. Like a yeah. dead one. Mm. Slimy yet satisfying. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the best place I've ever had oysters is, is uh, um, in the South. I, I don't know why that is the case, but that is the case. Like, in, um, yeah, South. I've never had cabbage before. In the Gulf, to be specific, like Louisiana and Texas for oysters. I know I've had mussels down there. I think they put them like, I think they farm them in like the brackish water channels. Mm. And yeah. uh, I think, pretty sure that's where I've seen some of the farms, but they're so good. Oh, we're at the hour mark. I guess we're done with the t shirt deal. What are you doing? Uh, custom hanging with a t shirt, duck race. Oh, I didn't even see the bar, dude. It's only been up there for an hour. You'll be all right. I've been staring down at this pool of water here. I got distracted by food. Dude, do you watch Chef V's little shows that he puts? It always, for some reason, I see it in the morning. And it's like just epic food. And I'm like, I haven't even eaten breakfast, bro. Making me starving. You keep digging. Oh, this in the comments. Morning. I think I did that right. There you go. So Brad, keep digging. MJ. Full half. Yeah, I drink another cup of coffee and get back to tearing my garage apart. Pretty soon, all this will be coming down. I'm going to finish this and then I'm going to go for take Jenny Benny down with me to go try to find some specimens. See if we can't find something. It's a beautiful day. It's supposed to be through the wet the weather around here, apparently. Nothing but sunshine. Which is great when you're off of work and horrible when you're on work. <laughs> you get See, how it works for me. It'll be sunny while I'm at work. Once I get off work on the way home, clouds will come out, the wind will start blowing, and it'll start raining. <laughs> I prefer the cold weather, man. I get pretty damn hot at work, dude. <laughs> sure. That 
in California, I understand. I understand. Weather, yeah, there's a major <laughs> difference between cold here and cold there, bro, for sure. <laughs> One day I'll be out of this cold ass state. So if I would. All right, here we go. You guys are lucky I didn't have no money to get in on this. Otherwise, I'd win. That's why I chose stuff. I'd today. win. Still might. I can't. What am I naming on there? I didn't buy a dunk. Uh -huh. There you go. Thomas, do you speaking of win? Do you have Mega Dog's information, dude? Yeah. Okay. There's only one other person that I haven't gotten confirmed on that whole deal, but that was pretty smooth transaction from the Wounded Warriors thing. I was grateful everyone did what they had to do. Yeah, yeah. I've already reached. Reached out to him. I actually just gave him my phone number so we can text instead of trying to go through emails and all that. There you go. Yeah, keep digging. I'm in Alaska. I'm still going to argue my next segment sucks. You're going to argue? Oh, it's Atlantic Salmon. Yeah, I don't like it. Yeah, Goats, I wouldn't move from Alaska. I just, I'm going to get me a place to move away from Alaska in the wintertime. Snowbird, you know? Go someplace else. Go BC. Here comes Brad. And there it went. Rob. Yeah, it's uh groceries aren't the cheapest up here. Today. Congrats, Brad. Congrats, Brad. That was a quick race. Jeez. Yeah. Don't mess around. It's time to go do stuff. Yeah. I'm almost through this pile. I'm pretty excited about it. <laughs> it's taking me quite a bit longer than I thought it would, for sure. Coming out of this thing pruned. Uh, playing more dirt. Find some more uh, stuff. All right, anyway, there you go. Yeah. That time. All right, here in the greatest country on earth, bad luck runs rampant. Mr. President, whatever you do, don't touch that big red button next to the salt. You mean this button? Mr. President, you almost caused a nuclear war. What are you going to do next? I'm going to escalator land. Bye bye. <laughs>